Hello, good afternoon and welcome to the news. I'm Michael Abriwa. Coming up in the news this afternoon, running battle between the police and commercial bike riders across the city. Special court in IT, Tamba Brahma dies in Rwanda. The Independent Media Commission, IMC, gives grace period to suspended media houses. A Chinese delegation led by the director in charge of assistance for West African countries holds discussion with President Kruma. All these stories and more including business and sports news all in the news this afternoon on Michael Abriwa. Reports reaching SLBC states that special court in IT Tamba Braima is dead. Golit, who until his death was serving 50 year sentence at Panga Prison in Rwanda. He died after a protracted disease, a family source said. It is still not confirmed whether his remains will be flown to Sierra Leone. A joint Chinese delegation led by the director in charge of assistance for you watching news live from the SBC for West African countries, Sue Debo and officials of the of the Ministry of Commerce that is salient to advance discussions on the implementation of the Mamama International Airport project, as Pedro Courtesy called on President Ernest Baikroma at State House. Razia Bash Kamara reports. It was presented to the President by the Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Coalition, Dr. Samura Kamara. The first is Mamama International Airport, and the second one is on the Center for Disease Control that is already under construction. <coughs> so I present you Mr. Sue Devo. Speaking on the purpose of their visit, the director in charge of assistance for West African countries, Ministry of Commerce of China, Mr. Su Debo, said they are in the country to negotiate with the government for the Mamama International Airport. He informed President Koroma that the project is very important for both the Sierra Leone and Chinese governments. Airport. Um... Minister, uh, our president, our minister, and also the minister for the foreign affairs, all think this product is very important for both Salian government and the Chinese government. So um, the minister dispatched me to here and uh, to have you know further talk with the, our counterparts in the government, and uh, we hope we can you know get um, some fruitful achievements this time. And just now, we all has very good talk with uh, many ministers. <laughs> and uh, we have exchanged our uh, views about uh, uh, these products. And uh, after the meeting with you, and uh, we will continue with the talking. We hope before we leave uh, your country, we could you know, achieve to some uh, for, for finally. Welcoming the delegation to Sierra Leone, President Kuruma said that the visit clearly shows their commitment as a country towards the implementation of the Mamama Airport project. The president told the delegation that during his last meeting with the president of China while attending the United Nations General Assembly in New York last year, he informed President Xi Jinping that as a government, they are having some difficulties in moving forward with the project. He disclosed that responding to his concern, the president of the People's Republic of China made a clear statement that whatever the difficulties are, his government is committed to ensure that they both find a solution to the problem and that they implement the Mamama project.
In that regard, President Koroma said he believes that the visit is in keeping with the commitment President Xi Jinping made during the last meeting in New York. The president told the delegation that he would also want them to know that as a government, he is still committed to the project. He noted with dismay, the nation has been waiting for the construction of the airport on the mainland over the years. President Koroma reaffirmed that government is still experiencing great difficulties to transfer their people and international visitors from Lunge to Freetown. So we hope that... Uh this visit um, will um, work towards having something conclusive that um, we will work with so that we will start the implementation <laughs> of the project for the construction of the airport within this year. Um, again, let me make the point that um, we have not made any representation anywhere, uh, be it in our foreign embassies or through uh, the UN agencies or through the World Bank or the IMF that we are not interested in the airport anymore. As a government, we are still committed to it. We know that we have challenges and that is why you are here. And our team will meet with you immediately after this meeting to address these challenges so that together we can agree on the way forward that will affect the implementation of the airport. So once more let me welcome you and assure you that government is still committed. We still want Mumbai Airport to be constructed and we are going to ensure that uh, with your support uh, we find a way out of this present <coughs> difficulty. Sierra Leone's envoy to the People's Republic of China has held fruitful discussions with the Deputy Director Bureau of African Affairs International Department of the Central Committee of the Communist Party of China in Beijing. The discussions we are aimed at lifting the bars of cooperation ties between the Communist Party of China and the All People's Congress of Sierra Leone, given their decades of closer political collaboration. Ambassador Alimami Kroma reflected the strong ties between the two parties since the eras of Chairman Mao Zedong and Sheikh Stevens of China and Sierra Leone respectively, also paying tribute to the role Sierra Leone played during China's bid to becoming a member of the United Nations Security Council. Ambassador Kroma expressed commitment to not only ensure growth in political ties between the two parties, but to also ensure the diplomatic and people-to-people -people relations between the two republics. CPC's Wang Eming said, China at attaches a great importance to our relationship with Sierra Leone and other developing nations. Wang Emin expressed optimism that with his appointment and wealth of experience, Ambassador Kuruma will further help to lift the party-to-party -party relations between the All People's Congress, APC, and the Communist Party of China, CPC. The Minister of Trade and Industry, Captain Aliyo Momodo Patso, has led a high-powered delegation on a fact-finding mission to the National Petroleum Installation at Kisidokiot. Reginald Strasser King went along. So, a delegation were received by the operations personnel of the installation department. The delegation was briefed by the personnel and after instructions from the safety officers in Bangura, the they, they were taken on a conducted tour of the installation. First port of call was the loading point where the vehicles transporting fuel are being loaded for transportation to different parts of the country. Valves for the storage tanks were also inspected as well as the gas tanks. The team also inspected the proposed banking facility and the control room, which is a fully computerized room that has a tracking system of all lorries transporting fuel throughout the country. 
told you that I'm going to Tumbo. It's not in the official list. You can only track from here to Tumbo. Mm -hmm. And now when it gets to Tumbo, how do my monitor know that that vehicle has just arrived in Tumbo? Do we have a link? We do, we do not have a link, unfortunately. We do not have a link. There is no way that yes. we know. Yes, we do not have so a link. So that system, um, now between regulatory and trade, I think we need to look at something else. But I think we need to discuss it mm. and see how much we can work with the regulatory body mm. and the oil companies. Mm. ASCOVIMI, a medical charity of specialists from the United States in partnership with a group of Semionians and Sierra Leonean specialists working in the diaspora, have provided free medical treatment, including surgeries to over 2,000 patients in Bo. Joseph Stanley reports. By Sierra Leonean born Joseph Nganen, since their presence in the outskirts of Bo last month, where farmers are in greater need of health interventions, provided free medical treatment to people seeking health at three treatment sites at the Bo Government Hospital, Gila's Children's Community Hospital, and the Popper's Clinic. At these clinics, more than 2,000 were registered, tagged, and screened for free consultation, clinical examination, provision of medication, and surgeries where necessary or cases diagnosed. She expressed the hope that this will serve as needs assessment strategy in mapping out expanded areas where various health professionals in the diaspora can contribute to effectively strengthening health system in more sustainable level in the country. Well, we're here to give back to our country. We love Sierra Leone. We're in the diaspora and we feel like instead of criticizing, we should be productive and we should have a brain gain initiative and come back and give to our country now after Ebola to be part of the post-Ebola um, health system strengthening um, in Sierra Leone. We love our country and we want to give back. That's all there is. But this is just the first of many. We wish to go to other areas. So Bo is just the first pilot. She loaded the efforts of the Deputy Minister of Health and Sanitation 1, Madina Roman, for her role in making the visit possible and pledged to continue exploring possible areas of assistance from partners in the diaspora. Deputy Minister of Health and Sanitation 1 reiterated the government's statement in building a resilient health system and thanked the team for the laudable humanitarian gesture in the country. I'm here in Bo to um, actually meet with the medical team that came from the United States. Um, they're composed of um, doctors from all over Cameroon and um, various parts that have come here, the chosen Go Go Government Hospital, to come help us with surgeries. And um, this team composed of 14 that um, arrived, surgeons, and then we have local teams here in Bo that have their partnering with, which makes a total of about 24 um, health professionals. Madam Raman, on behalf of government, expressed profound gratitude to the mission and expressed the hope that other Sierra Leoneans in the diaspora will emulate the initiative. SLBC News, Joseph Stanley reporting. Deputy Minister of Health, Juan Madino Raman, has described commitment, empathy, quality, and selflessness as important pillars for successful midwifery practice. She made a statement during the National School of Midwifery graduation on the theme, Women and Newborn, the heart of midwifery, held at the Miata Conference Hall. Joseph Stanley, again. The mandate of the School of Midwifery is to produce competent and skilled professionals in the midwifery practice settings who can function at service levels of care towards reduction of maternal and infant mortality and morbidity, according to Madame Madina Raman. Central to the progress of any nation is the development of human resources through training and education. She disclosed that commitment, empathy, Quality and selflessness are important pillars for the successful midwifery practice and that each midwife embraces these principles, life expectancy of the populace increases dramatically. 
Madam Raman maintained that the gaps in the human resource, especially midwives, has been a concern to the ministry and that the newly qualified midwives will ease the current shortage of midwives where they are most needed. The Deputy Minister won't encourage her colleagues to act as agents of change by adding value to the system. Delivering the school's report, the principal, Dr. Joan Shepard, said quite a lot has happened and accomplished over the past years, but more still remains to be done to improve the quality of products and infrastructure of the school. She appealed for the allocation of budget and stressed the need to build the capacity of staff and strengthen clinical services. Let me therefore use this golden opportunity to congratulate our newly qualified midwives. Well done, Secretary. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, UNFPA representative, WHO representative, members of the high table, distinguished guests. This is the best set, the best result. The UNFPA assistant representative Ibrahim Kamara said this year's graduation theme, Women and Newborn, the heart of midwife is in line with the UNFPA mandate. He said professional midwives who are equipped with competency and skills are crucial to achieve the sustainable development goals. The swearing in of newly graduated midwives and distribution of certificates and prize form part of the ceremony. SLBC News Joseph Stanley reporting. Mayor of Freetown City Council Franklin Body Gibson has said in Freetown that Council will ensure that they beautify Freetown and protect the environment from deforestation. He was speaking during the commemoration of the Freetown Municipality Beautification Day, which was witnessed by senior government officials and school children at Court Entry in Freetown. Yvette Jesko report. The municipality tree planting exercise at Cotton Tree, Taylor Cummings Garden, and OAU Drive was witnessed by senior officials from Immigration Department, Sierra Leone Road Safety Authority, councillors, Road Maintenance Fund, Religious Leaders, Ministry of Health, Agriculture Ministry, Sierra Leone Police, National Revenue Authority, school children, amongst others. According to the mayor of Freetown City Council, Franklin Bode Gibson, the day is set up as a form of ensuring the beautification of Freetown and also to protect the environment in the future. He added that they want to see the city green and hope to target all the areas in Freetown. The exercise, he said, will continue throughout the reigning season, where the Ministry of Agriculture will play a major role in the tree planting process. He assured journalists that the process will not fail due to their well-structured monitoring plan that has been put in place. That's why we have converted it to Freetown Municipality Beautification Day. So we are planting flowers from area to area, wanting to beautify Freetown and to make it look green. My lady, it is not just beautifying Freetown. We are afraid of the way our forests have been depleted. If you go, if you go around the peninsula, you will understand precisely what I'm saying. All of the, the, the forest over the catchment areas have been washed open. Water has been very, very difficult. If you go today to small Guma, which runs and fill big Guma, today small Guma is dried up. If you go to Babaduri, upper region, it is dried up. People have washed the entire, all of the forest areas, and they've left them bare. I can, I don't want to cast blame. Let me blame each and every area. It, 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 it is obvious that some of us did not play our roles right. We did not live up to our responsibility. Some of us, when I say some of us, you should be able to understand this.
He encouraged all to always plant a tree in their communities and that tree planting reminds Sierra Leoneans about our responsibility for the protection of our environment. Saying environmental protection is worldwide obligation on every nation for the sustenance of the intricate ecological relationship between mankind and the planet which nature has endowed us. The aim of using the pupils to plant trees in their communities is a way of protecting the communities for the benefit of all and saying that it is a positive move for generations yet unborn, the mayor said. A pupil from the Cathedral Girls Primary, Victoria Gary, has this to say. To learn how to plant and how to beautify our county and also how to beautify the city. Our critical look of Sierra Leone has shown that over 40% of our virgin forest has been depleted as a result of uncontrolled logging, slash, burning, shifting cultivation, mining and urban expansion. The current rate at which our forest area is depleting requires urgent strategic actions to address this menace. Our forest continues to play the important role of providing timber for construction. This morning, there was a run in battles between the police and commercial bike riders at a Cannon Street and the Hillside Bypass Road. The skirmish was as a result of what the bike riders say was the death of one of their colleagues, who, according to the riders, were hit with a truncheon on his spine. Here's the highlight. But why this move by the Okada riders? I have in the studios Aaron Kroma, the Deputy Secretary General of the Commercial by Aaron Fofana, the Deputy Secretary General of the Commercial Bike Riders Union. Good afternoon, Aaron, and welcome to News R. Now, Aaron, what actually sparked the riot this morning? Okay, according to information and sources, if I can still remember, last night we were right to the mortuary where the body is laid. The the the, the, mis, the misfortune there are always the bike rider. When they are including the president himself with the bike rider, we met the, 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 the scalp. We interviewed a lot of people. They told us that really he was hit by a police man who is, uh, who is around OSD. He passed to the P CBD area where they were trying to arrest him, when to be arrested from the forces that he used. Then the OSD push him right to the quarter area. Another person, because we are two in number, according to the information, we are two in number, the OSD. One of the OSD hit him with the front door on his eye. As I'm speaking to you, you even go to the mortuary, you can see the mark there from that particular individual, the late brother, by the name of YCC. Now, Aaron, having said all of that, according to the reports we got, they say your men, they took the law into their hands. Is that true? Um, I will not say they took the law into their hand because when, I, when I'm looking at the policy guidelines that we have in Syria, we have policy guidelines, but there are no regulators, people that to regulate these policy guidelines. And are, now they are trying to do what we call discipline with punishment. And you cannot combine discipline with punishment at the same time. When you discipline a child, a child fails to realize that you can apply punishment. You see, and for a matter of fact, madam, let's look at one thing. You cannot ask your child not to go to a neighbor's house to watch film or watch shows without having the provision of that particular child. You should have the provision first before ever you ask you, you forbid your child not to go to your friend's house to watch film. 
you see. Now, why I'm saying this thing for, this thing could have been done because I can remember when I came from Ghana, I came up with an issue. This guy needs to be twinned, they need to be synthesized. I wrote a project, I sent a copy to the State House, I sent a copy to the Minister of Transport, even road safety, uh, road safety. I gave a copy to Madame Bendu, even the Major Sandy, who is the one that responsible for, for road safety. It's all about how to, it's a serious uh, training which is all about psycho, uh, psycho, uh, psychosocial training. To change the minds and the attitude of those riders, you see, we know we, as for me, I really know that they are lawlessness. I'm not defending them that they are not lawlessness. But what we need to do, what are some of the mechanisms or provisions that have been done from the government for these people? Now, in other words, what you're saying is that the police should not have used the torture. Thank you. Now, now what do you prefer them to use? Because that was the only option they had by then. Well, as far as I'm concerned, I know that every one of those riders they belong to various parks. They have their centers where they can normally be. What it should do, because according to the training, as, a, as, a, as an enforcer or you are, you're doing enforcement work, they train you how to how to augment or complement some issues. You cannot uh, you cannot hold someone with force. For me, if uh, if I was the one, I was to just take the number plate of that particular rider or try to get you know a look at that particular rider, maybe. Because I know them very well, when they pass to a certain area without arresting them, they will come there again for the second time. Now, um, Aaron, this is not the first time the police is putting measures, uh, I mean, preventing Okada riders from riding in the central business districts, I mean, the central part of town. Don't you think you're still bitter, being that you've been prevented from applying those areas that the police have said? Well, I, I, I do know that, yes, I do know that it is not a very first time, you understand me, because even when you're looking at the code of conduct, even the previous meeting that we attended with the Minister of Internal Affairs, Mr. Paolo Conte, yes, he really, you know, he really clarified everything to us that this is not the very first time. In the first place, we don't even have public sympathy. If my memory can still remind, reminds me, we don't have public sympathy, because I can remember the meeting that we attended, None of the stakeholders, none of the, even the enforcers can really talk good things about the riders. You understand me? I do know that, yes, this is not the very first time. But let's take a look at the amount of population, amount, the membership that we have in this bike riding. And majority of them, they are youth. They have nothing else to do. It's not the very first time. But what I'm expecting from the government, let us then try to create a way, uh, something like a venue or uh, an area where if you, you, you ask someone not to step so, then you give another direction to the person to go down another way. Now finally, before you leave us, are you still bitter? Bitter about what? About that what? should be prevented today? not to ply the central business district. They shouldn't go there. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not agree for them to go to the CBD, you understand me? But you cannot apply discipline with punishment at the same time. This is my, 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 my focus. Now, so far so good. What's your stance and what's the situation like now? The way the situation looks like now, even this morning, I, t I took a walk. I can still remember, I came as far to Gaza. I met them there, I talked to them, educate them, trying to tell them not for them to take the law into their hands. They should be careful. Even if they want to do what we call, I don't know, strike or whatever, they shouldn't do it. If they want to go bear the, the, the individual that already passed away, let them t be careful and do it in a peaceful manner. Do you understand me? That the general public can even have that sympathy for them. It's what I told them this morning. But in this case, what I would like for the government to do now, let, let them try to provide provisions for these guys. And let them try to talk to the police. I should, I'm not saying that they should not apply force to them, but it should, it should, they should minimize the, the force. Okay, thank you very much for joining us on Newsa this afternoon. Is Aaron Fofana, National Deputy Secretary General of the Commercial Bike Riders. You're watching the news live from SRBC Television. We'll go over to our business desk and join Hawana to content. Thank you. Hello and welcome to the business update with me, Awana Tukonte. We begin with the foreign exchange rates. The US dollar buys at 6,003 leons and sells at 6,124 leons. The British pound sterling buys at 8,673 leons and sells at 8,850 leons. 
and the euro buys at 6816 lions and sells at 6953 lions courtesy of the united bank for africa uba the governor of the Bank of Sierra Leone, Dr. Kaifala Mara, has called on all airline agencies and other financial institutions to stop receiving and making payments in foreign currencies. This is said as depreciated the country's loans and its economy. Dr. Mara made this statement at a press conference held at the Governor's Conference Hall. Dorin Kaloko was there. I'll bring you that report in a subsequent news hour program. The Ministry of Finance and Economic Development has embarked on claiming government payrolls and has asked vote controllers and heads of departments and agencies to submit their actual certified staff list. The Ministry of Finance release states that the Ministry will hold the salaries of vote controllers and heads of departments and agencies who fail to provide the staff list of their various departments. That's the business update. I'm Awana Tukonte. Keep watching. I mean, thanks to Yawana to contact for the business of the day. I will continue with the news. National Revenue Authority has confiscated goods of the Dynafarm Pharmaceuticals Company, Sailing Limited, to be auctioned to the public. According to sources from NRA, the move is to track down on business entities evading taxes as the country heavily relies on taxes paid for revenue generation. The National Revenue Authority Corporate Affairs Manager Mohamed Bangwa informed SLBC that the authority aims to recover money owed to it by the company by auctioning the goods to the public. It says that any plus money will be given back to the company. The NRA Corporate Affairs Manager adds that the company will pay a 25% fine and an amount ranging from 11% and above interest. We'll bring you the highlights of that story. Over to our sports desk and join David Patrick Amara. Well, for sports update, Leon Stars midfielder Alfred Zangalo Sanko has tendered apology for physically assaulting SLBC sport journalist Francis Bernard. He made the apology at a press conference held at the SLBC boardroom here at New England. On the 6th of June, Alfred Zangalo Sanko physically assaulted Francis Bernard after the donation of bags of cement to players for defeating the Falcons of Sudan in the All-African Cup of Nations qualifier at the Sierra Stevens Stadium in Freetown. Francis Dandema attended the press briefing and sent in this report. Sports reporters came to the newsroom very sad and reported to management that she was assaulted by Leonster's Alfred Zagalusanko. The Director General of SLBC, Elvis Barabun Hallowell, condemned the acts on TV and reaffirmed that his management will ensure they pursue the matter in the court of law. Boastful of his act that fateful Monday, this was what the player, Alfred Zagalusanko, told his friends, which was later posted on the social media. I want short speaking. 